This video is for entertainment purposes only and is not financial advice. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and in today's video, I'll be talking all things Fish and Paiko Healthcare. Fish and Paiko Healthcare is a company that's listed on the New Zealand as well as Australian stock exchanges under the stock ticker FPH. Shareholders in Fish and Paiko Healthcare have done really well over the past 10 years. However, in the past year or so, the stock hasn't really moved anywhere after reporting stellar financial results for the financial year 2021. So I'll be going over the company, what it it does the products that it has as well as going over the moat the management team as well as some of the financial metrics involved with this company and I'll be looking at the valuation of the company and sharing what I'm doing so if you enjoyed today's video be sure to hit like and subscribe but with no time wasted let's get right into the video so Fish and Pico Healthcare is currently trading at $29.35 per share and you can see over the past five years its share price has gone up 176 percent but most recently in the past year or so the share price has not gone anywhere after rallying in 2020 on the back of COVID-19. So what does Fish and Pico Healthcare do? To put it very simply, Fish and Pico Healthcare is a specialist in delivering consistent high flow humidified air at body temperature with minimal condensation. They operate under two divisions, hospital as well as home care. So looking at their hospital solutions first, within hospital they offer a comprehensive humidified respiratory solution to both adults as well as infants from invasive to non-invasive ventilation. The Optiflow nasal high flow uh, product which supports spontaneously breathing patients was actually recommended by the World Health Organization for use in COVID-19 related hypoxemia. In addition, a recent recommendation for hospital preparedness calls for advocacy for the use of nasal high flow. So hypoxemia it refers to the below normal level of uh, oxygen in blood cells causing the shortness of breath issue and COVID-19 severe patients usually had those uh, symptoms. So Fish and Pico Healthcare's nasal high flow was uh, used as the treatment for that and that is why Fish and Pico has done so well in the past uh, year in terms of its financial results because they've been selling a whole lot more devices to uh, hospitals all around the world. Fish and Pico Healthcare also provides surgical humidification solutions in the hospital division. A major issue for surgeons during laparoscopic and open surgeries is the loss of body temperature. This can cause cellular dehydration as well as evaporative heat loss. So the Fish and Pico Healthcare surgical humidification system provides numerous benefits during surgery, post-surgery as well as longer term benefits. Overall, the hospital division of Fish and Pico contributes roughly 76% of total operating revenue, an increase of 87% year on year. So currently hospital is generating $1.5 billion dollars in revenue. Now looking at the home care solution side of things, this is where Fish and Paykel sees medium term growth. Their flagship product, the FMP Sleep Style, is designed to treat people with obstructive sleep apnea. So in case you don't know, obstructive sleep apnea is a condition in which breathing stops involuntarily for brief periods of time during sleep. Normally air flows smoothly from the mouth to and nose into the lungs at all times. Periods when breathing stops are called apnea apnea or apneic episodes. So Fish and Pico Healthcare Sleep Style is a device that provides CPAP therapy, an abbreviation for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure Therapy, and uh, this is a treatment for patients who have obstructive sleep apnea. So I've got a picture over here of the sleep style, there'll be a tube connected into it for the uh, treatment of the patient. So home care currently makes up 24% of total operating revenues uh, at currently $465 million, an increase of 2% year on year. And overall, Fish and Pico Healthcare sees their market opportunity as 20 billion. So at the moment, a lot of people who have obstructive sleep apnea actually don't know that they have obstructive sleep apnea. So they don't get diagnosed and they don't get treated for it. So Fish and Pico Healthcare is educating uh, hospitals as well as the general public so that uh, they can get treatment for OSA so that Fish and Pico Healthcare can grow its total addressable market. So 
this is a huge space that Fish and Pico is operating in and definitely a lot of future growth for the company. Now, in terms of the moat of the business, the key moat that I see of Fish and Pico Healthcare is their patents. So Fish and Pico Healthcare is a growing patent portfolio. As you can see over the past 10 years or so, the US patents have been increasing exponentially. They have a remaining average life of uh, patents of 11.6 years. So my understanding is that the US has a 20 year patent window and what Fish and Pico Healthcare does is that they'll continually tweak their product, make minor improvements or uh, additions, new features into their product so that they can extend their uh, window of that 20 year period and also prevent other people from coming in to make their products. So patents are definitely necessary in this type of industry because Fish and Pico spends huge amounts of money into R&D and they'll need to protect their intellectual property so that they can generate a sufficient return on investment as well as recoup the costs on their expenditures. And about four years ago in 2017, Fish and Pico Healthcare sued ResMed, which is their competitor in the home care solution space, that they've breached their pay patents on their CPAP device. So ResMed quickly countersued Fish and Pico and that continued back and forth for about two years. And in the process, Fish and Pico incurred quite high legal fees involved with uh, this Red Med situation. So in 2019, uh, ResMed and Fish and Pico announced settlement of their global patent litigation. So this does show that patents are necessary in this type of industry that they operate in, and it does prevent newer entrants coming into the market to produce the same type of product. So that is a key competency of Fish and Pico Healthcare in terms of preventing newer entrants taking their market share. So now let's take a look at the strength of the management team. And the CEO and Managing Director of Fish and Pico Healthcare is Lewis Graydon. Lewis became the Managing Director and CEO in April 2016. He has worked at Fish and Pico Healthcare for 37 years, holding various engineering positions, overseeing the development of products as well as development of manufacturing, quality, intellectual property, supply chain, and clinical research functions. So this guy does almost everything uh, technical with the company and I think this is the type of person that you need when you're running an engineering company. You need someone at the top with engineering knowledge and background. And I've heard many good things about him from my uh, previous life as an auditor at PwC. I've heard that he does take a very engineering mindset uh, when he runs the company. He identifies any bottlenecks and tries to fix those bottlenecks so that the company can run smoothly. On the board of Fish and Pico, we also have Mike Dan. Daniel. Mike Daniel was the previous CEO of Fish and Pico Healthcare from November 2001 to March 2016. So Mike was the CEO of Fish and Pico Healthcare when Fish and Pico was a newly listed company after being spun off from Fish and Pico Appliances. He also has an engineering background and a whole lot of experience. So definitely good to have someone like him on the board of directors. And just this week as well, the list of Queen's Birthday Honors recipients for 2021 has been released and Mike Daniel was awarded the Knight Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit. So Mike Daniel has assisted the company's rise to becoming the world leading manufacturer of medical devices for patients with breeding difficulties. So definitely has done a tremendous job leading Fisher and Pico Healthcare. So overall, you can't complain with the management team with the amount of experience they have and technical skills available to run this company and the financials definitely have shown that they've done this really well. So over the past five years, you can see how the revenue has increased over time from 894 million in 2017 to 1.9 billion in 2021. You can see profit after tax has also followed revenue increasing from $169 million to $524 million in five years. And you can see over here that the hospital products have benefited tremendously from COVID-19. In 2017, they sold $500 million worth of hospital products. And in 2021, it sits at 1.5 billion, a threefold increase. And home care products have also increased, albeit at a slower rate, 
compared to hospital products. Home care products increased from $381.5 million to $465 million. So overall, revenue has grown tremendously and there's really not much that you can complain about in terms of financial metrics. You can see over here, return on equity has been a whopping 57% in 2021. And as you can see in normal situations before COVID, return on equity was well above 30%. So usually the return on equity that I'm looking for is around 15% as a good business. That's how you know a company has some kind of moat. So when a company returns 30 plus percent over the past five years consistently, that's when you know this company really has some kind of competitive advantage or some kind of key competency that allows it to perform so well over the long term. They also don't have any debt. They have a net cash position of $300 million and gearing ratio of negative. The number of shares outstanding has increased slightly but that's because of the shares issued to employees as part of their uh, remuneration and benefits program. In terms of their dividends it's increased year on year from 19 and a half to 38 cents per share and that has been driven by an increase in earnings per share as well. Earnings per share increased from 29 and a half cents to 90.4 cents over the five year period. So this is a company that has consistently grown its earnings and consistently grown its uh, dividends as well. And this is a top company. You can see by the financials, nothing at all to really complain about. However, you can see its share price though. That is something that you can complain about because shareholders have basically not had any gain over the past year. Share price is up 3% and mostly flat during the year. And the reason of course, was because of management guidance. In particular, there wasn't any guidance provided by uh, management for the next financial year. The market hates uncertainty, so when there's no management guidance, the market will usually sell down a particular stock. So in Fish and Paykel's case, they did report really stellar results, net profit up 82%. But uh, on the day of the announcement, the share price actually took a dip because of the lack of management guidance. Management said that with the ongoing uncertainties with vaccinations, lockdowns, COVID-19 variants, localized waves, and return to stable hospitalization rates around the world, the company is not providing guidance for the 2022 financial year. We expect our hospital and home care revenue for FY22 to be impacted by the number of COVID-19 related hospitalizations around the world. So management doesn't really know how they're going to perform because they've benefited tremendously from COVID-19 and with COVID-19 vaccines rolling out across the world, the demand for their hospital products in particular will go down. So you can see over here, the current active cases have been decreasing over time. So that has caused a little bit of uncertainty around how management thinks the company will perform in the coming year ahead. However, the valuation of Fish and Pico Healthcare is still quite high at 46 times forward price to earnings. So this compares to its competitors ResMed at 38 times as well as Teleflex, which is a US listed company selling medical devices at 30 times. This graph, however, doesn't paint a full picture because Fish and Paykel Healthcare has been growing quicker than its competitors, ResMed, as well as Teleflex. So in my opinion, this premium of Fish and Paykel Healthcare is justified based on their historical performance as well as their future expected growth. Now, there's no forward guidance provided from management. However, the analyst covering Fish and Paykel Healthcare is forecasting an earnings per share of 63 cents per share in FY22. This puts Fish and Paykel Healthcare at a forward PE of 46 times. So 46 times is definitely high. However, you are paying for quality because Fish and Paykel Healthcare is probably one of the best companies in terms of quality in New Zealand. And with these quality type stocks, you usually don't get to buy them on huge discounts. You still have to pay usually above market average PE ratios. Uh, because they are such good quality. Now I've done a DCF model on this company. I've done two different models actually. Now the first model that I did was I used uh, this year's free cash flow and I projected a growth rate for the next three years of negative three zero and three percent to reflect that it's coming off a high base 
and it won't go anywhere for the next three years before returning to more normalized growth of 12%. The 12% revenue growth is what management is expecting the company to grow at over the long term. Now in this model, I do get an equity value per share of $25. So in my second model, what I did was I flattened out free cash flow. And as you can see, free cash flow number here is much lower than the number over here, about 100 million lower. And it's because I flattened out free cash flow, assuming that COVID didn't really have an impact on 2021. And so to calculate this number, what I did was I projected uh, the previous four years growth rate into 2021. And because I've already flattened out the free cash flow in this model, what I did was I then projected the 12% going forward into the next five years, decreasing to 10% for year six to year 10. And this gives me an equity value per share of $26.75 per share. So both my DCF models uh, show me that, you know, a fair price in my opinion, based on my assumptions, is around $25 to $26 per share. And that equates to roughly a 40 times price to earnings ratio. So if the share price does fall into the $25 or $26 range, then I'll happily enter a position into Fish and Pico Healthcare. But at current prices, I'm waiting this one out and watching from the sidelines. It is very possible that the current EPS consensus by analysts of 63 cents is conservative. And if the company delivers say 70 cents or 80 cents, 90 cents, then the share price will definitely rally over $30 again. So if the company does achieve 70 cents, per share next year, then they are currently already trading at 40 times price to earnings. So that's the price level that I'm looking to enter into a position. So at the moment, I don't have any shares in Fish and Pico Healthcare yet. So let me know what you think about Fish and Pico Healthcare in the comment section down below. Always keen to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.